Hello everyone, my name is Kate. I suffer from gadolinium toxicity. I got an MRI a year ago and my life has never been the same since. I'm struggling every day with chronic pain, but in this video I thought I would talk about my symptoms because there's a huge range of symptoms. I just want to be clear with people like what you can possibly get from gadolinium, what I personally just as one individual got. There have been even more symptoms than what I'm about to list off, but I would like to go through each one. So the first one is rashes. Gadolinium really messes with your skin and in general it's kind of like not supposed to be in your body. So I think the body just freaks out and I ended up getting really dry, flaky patches of skin on my arms and on my face. I would say a couple months after gadolinium, but I've never had that before in my life. Arrhythmia is another one, so when your heart beats out of beat. Tachycardia is another thing that some people get, which is like a rapid heart rate. Whenever I walk up steps or anything, my heart pounds. So I can do activities that don't seem like that big of a deal and my heart will be pounding from them. Wrinkled skin and lost collagen. That is something I touched on in my day in the life video, if you've not seen that video yet. Um, the metal messes with your collagen. It's a very common symptom. People age super rapidly after getting it. Another symptom is severe, severe insomnia. I know quite a few people who only slept two to three hours every night after getting gadolinium. The first week after I got gadolinium, I probably slept three hours. The night after, I actually slept like maybe 10 minutes total. It was it was basically impossible to sleep. And the worst part is it feels like your entire body has been plugged into an electrical socket and is getting shocked. Imagine that with a headache and burning. It just feels like your entire body is being electrocuted. The next symptom, breast pain. Interestingly, they use gadolinium for breast MRIs. But I found that so ironic because, I mean, I know that they're looking for cancer, that's why they do it. But I, for months and months and months and months, and I still have breast pain, it just feels like someone literally used my boobs as punching bag. It feels like someone went like, and just bruised the hell out of them. Another symptom is called fasciculations. Basically when your muscles twitch, so it's super creepy. You'll just be sitting there doing nothing. If you've ever had an eye twitch before, imagine that, but your muscles are contracting. Here's a video of this. We've had a lot of gadolinium sufferers who've had this. It would have freaked me out <laughs> before gadolinium, but now compared to all of my symptoms, it's probably the one that bothers me the least because it, it doesn't really hurt. It's just weird. This is a symptom I really, really struggle with is stabbing pains in my organs. There was one period in time where it was really bad with my heart. I would get a bunch of stabbing pains in my heart and it felt like someone was stabbing me with a knife. I mean, I've never been stabbed with a knife, but that's the way that I can describe it. Taking something super sharp and just jabbing it into your Heart. And then I still have stabbing pains in my organs all the time. Sometimes I scream, sometimes I have to lie down, sometimes I just have to wait it out, sometimes it's when I stand up, my organs start stabbing. It's pretty awful. Nobody should have to go through that. The next symptom is headaches. It's not even a normal headache. If you haven't had gadolinium, you will never experience a headache like this. It feels like concrete has been poured into your brain and it, you kind of feel it almost in the lobes of your brain. I've never had a headache before in my life where I can feel it within the lobes of my brain. It would usually be like the front, the back, maybe a stress headache or maybe dehydration, but you can actually feel the parts of your brain and it hurts so badly. If you just took the brain out of someone's head and beat it with a stick or took a knife to it, that's how the headaches feel. The next symptom is the next symptom is cracking bones. I started getting cracking bones a week and a half after my MRI, so it did not take me much time at all. I laid in bed and it felt like someone was taking a drill into my bones. So imagine a drill and someone going eh, 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 eh on every single one of your bones. It just felt like someone was attacking it, my lower back, like all of a sudden, it really felt like something was drilling holes into my lower back. As a result of that, it started to hurt to lay down, it started to hurt to sit, it started to hurt to walk. Another thing about bone pain that's super important to know is that gadolinium is attracted to the bones. What it does is it actually goes into your bones and displaces calcium, and then the calcium is freely floating around your body, 
and then it can calcify your organs which if anybody knows that's really not good for you like calcified organs is very very bad for you if you broke every bone in your body or if you could have like glass shards in your bones that's what it feels like and that pain has not gone away for me at all like it's especially triggered by any kind of exercise so the next one is burning of the scalp this is the symptom that stuck with me from the moment that they injected me all the way to eight months later so after they injected this stuff into me i started feeling this burning sensation in the upper part of my head and it was weird because like my symptoms seemed to like it felt like they came from that spot like the next day i felt like that area of my head couldn't breathe and then i had an episode where it was almost stroke like where like i couldn't speak and part of my body was going numb and i couldn't control my muscles it started burning up there in the back of my head and i actually said to them i mean i screamed at them i said i'm burning in here like because i was like did i leave a hairband in and i'm like i don't have a hairband on this part of my head like i was thinking oh i have a hairband with a metal bit because at that point didn't realize they were injecting a metal into me, so that makes sense why it was burning. But anyway, um, that burning sensation feels as if someone were to pour gasoline on your head and then to light it on fire. Light a whole flame and then you're just burning everywhere. And I had that sensation every single day for eight months after. I get burning in my scalp still, like in the whole thing, but it's not as targeted to that area now. But yeah, eight months, every single day for eight months I had that. The next symptom is the one that devastated me the most. And this is blank thoughts. I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but before gadolinium, I was very self-entertained. I always had something I was doing, something that interested me because to be honest with you, my brain like was a very entertaining place to be. I constantly have an inflow of like happy memories and sometimes I would just like laugh and people would be like, oh, what's, what are you thinking about? And I'd be like, remember that time that, and it would be like a funny story. And it was just a really good place to live. But basically I had these beautiful thoughts and I was just flowing with ideas. And then as soon as I got gadolinium, the next day I turn to my mom and I say, mom, I don't hear my thoughts anymore. Like I literally said that to her. And then right after I said that to her is when I ha started having that like kind of like stroke like incident where I lost control of my body and that my body went numb and I couldn't speak. And my thoughts have not come back since then. So whenever I just am sitting here, there's nothing in my brain. I can say words, but I don't have thoughts anymore. And I just think that's so incredibly messed up. Imagine if all of the people of our history, the philosophers, the people who enjoyed going to the park, sitting under a tree and thinking about life, they just had blank thoughts. I just think it's messed up and maybe some other people out there have like thoughts so i'm like welcome to the club now but it's definitely brain damage like my brain used to be on more and now it's blank and it's it's devastating that alone has made me feel like part of my soul has died because that like your thoughts equal your perception your experience of life the things you say the jokes you tell the memories you you have to offer and even though like my family members have said, you know, that they still see me as the old me or whatever, personality wise, that was something I was so scared of. I literally thought like, what if my boyfriend doesn't like me anymore after this because I don't have the same thoughts. So that's devastating and I can imagine that anybody else out there would think that's really messed up if you got a scan and then afterward you felt like you were about 20% of what you used to be people are injustice in so many ways but to actually give someone brain damage and take away their thoughts take away their motivation take away everything that made them a person and just leave them with blank thoughts is really really twisted and i would say it's borderline evil if i'm being honest with you it hurts to use my hands too so if i rest my face on my hand like this the bones in my hands will hurt everything hurts basically love that so another thing that people experience women particularly after getting gadolinium is they will miss their period or their period becomes irregular as a lot of people know the period is such an important indicator of 
whole health if you are missing your period that can be a sign for concern or that something is going wrong in your body i didn't have my period for probably like the first four months i eventually got it but it became irregular after that another thing i didn't write down on the list was this is not to sound like i'm i, I love my body the way that it looks even now but like my stomach used to be super flat and i definitely got like a little more pudge on my stomach but on top of that, my organs actually hardened in my intestinal area, so my stomach sticks out a little more. So it's not even really a lot of pudge. It's just actually my organs like protruding from my stomach more. And it doesn't look that bad, but it like hurts. It feels like there's like a rock in your body and then it eventually slowly starts to go away. The next symptom that I and others have had is vertigo. For people who haven't experienced vertigo before, this is how I describe it. If you are going to a casino and you play one of those games where you pull the thing down i don't know what it's called the rolling thing well that rolling machine is what your eyesight becomes so when you have vertigo you turn your head slightly and then your entire vision starts rolling and you feel like you're gonna fall over and it's terrifying because if you're if you get motion sick easily like you can literally puke from vertigo and i know a lot of people have vertigo out there but like this was just induced by gadolinium so i don't believe it should that's okay. Anyway, next thing is acne. So I've had acne in the past and I'm pretty open about that, but um, because of the changes to my skin, I definitely think that maybe my skin layer is just more compromised and I have a lot more acne than I did before. So that's kind of a bummer, but whatever. I mean, if I could trade all my symptoms for just acne, I totally would. The next is convulsions. Drop them down. <laughs> Dad, why is this happening? <laughs> Okay, then sit right here. There you go. Okay. I can't say why. What? Is she having a seizure? I was one of the lucky people to have experienced convulsions after gadolinium. They started the second day after getting gadolinium and they were really scary. They would be either preceded by or followed with episodes where I couldn't speak and I was slurring my speech. I just remember falling all the time and convulsing on the ground. I fell in my front yard, I fell in my hallway, I fell in the driveway and I would just be like, uh, uh, is the best way to put it. And I have no epilepsy. I don't have a history of seizures at all. I know plenty of people who've had this as a side effect, but it is also stated in the medication guide on gadolinium that that is a possibility. So the next one is loss of muscle control is my next one. I would have these like episodes after I was injected where I wouldn't be able to control my neck. So I would have to like crick it um, kind of like I would just basically have to go with whatever it was trying to do. So sometimes I'd crick it this way, sometimes I'd crick it that way, sometimes I'd crick it that way, and I would just be sitting there having to go through that until it went away. And it could last for hours, and it was horrible. Like I remember trying to go out to dinner after like a couple days after being in the hospital and just sitting there. I couldn't smile. Here's a picture. I couldn't smile on um, the day after my. MRI at all because I couldn't move the muscles in my face. The next symptom is tinnitus, which is ringing in your ears. So I constantly have ringing in my ears now. It's just like 24 seven. And at first it's quite devastating. When this happens, you're like, why am I going through this? But at this point in time, same thing with the acne. If I could treat all my symptoms for that, I would deal with it. Like there was a documentary I watched about a lady who did assisted suicide because she had tinnitus. Mine isn't like so bad that I'm gonna go hurt myself. I shouldn't have it though. It, I mean, it's another one of those things where it's like, that's horrible. The next two are spine pain and neck pain. Pretty much all my bones hurt, but like if I sit in the car for too long, my back really, really, really hurts. So even just sitting, like my spine will ache like no other. And then I have to like either just lay down and push through it, which is what I do the majority of the time or take ibuprofen after. Neck pain, same kind of deal. The neck hurts. My neck also cracks whenever I turn it. So there are a couple things in my body that I can do that can cause cracking. One, when I chew, I can hear my jaw crack. Two, when I turn my neck, I hear it. I just heard, I just turned it and you hear this like, 
that started happening after gadolinium so clearly my bones are so messed up and i'm a little more used to it now but it's actually pretty devastating when that happens and then i forgot to mention the third thing but it's just pretty much anything i do my bones crack so standing up walking up and down steps they crack just using my hands i can literally hear my fingers creaking in my body because my bones are so creaky and cracky the next symptom was stuttering if you're wondering why I'm not stuttering that much in this video, it's because I have edited it and I will trip over my words a lot. I will repeat words, I will say words backwards, um, I will flip parts of words, and like I can feel in my head that it's harder to get sentences out. Like it, it literally is like I have sort of a concept, but it's like I might have like a few words that are all mashed up and I have to try to verbally get them out of my mouth into a sentence that makes sense. Like before this, it used to be where I would have a sentence in my head that made sense right before I said it. I would hear that and then I would say it. I would hear another sentence and then I would say it. Now it's like there are ideas that are jumbled up and then sometimes I try to get them into words, but it doesn't work. It literally feels like there's like a block in my brain where like part of it was cut off. That's how it feels. Or is stuttering. I still mix up my words a lot. And I stuttered probably more at the beginning because I went from like literally not being able to speak and convulsing every day to like slowly being able to speak again so it's not like as severe as it used to be but like I can't read stuff now and then I'm just explaining this part in the video I said I couldn't read what I meant is I can't read out loud so when I try to read a paragraph I will mess up probably like every other sentence somehow like I just will completely botch the word and I can probably speak better than I can read out loud but it's just like so frustrating because it just randomly hits you and it's like, why? Why did I need this brain damage? The answer is I didn't. But instead of informing me about gadolinium, they decided to just go ahead and take the risk of giving me brain damage and all of these other symptoms that I'm listing. I didn't really have a problem reading before. Like I literally did debate and all these other activities in high school and I read just fine. The next one is your skin being on fire like feeling like it's burning constantly so this is something that happens to me constantly it's actually noticeable to the point that my boyfriend noticed sometimes he's like oh don't touch me like your skin is too hot and it's not like i feel like warm internally but it's like literally my skin feels like it's on fire and it's burning my hypothesis for why that is is the metal goes to every part of your body it goes to your skin it goes to your brain it goes to all your organs your bones so I probably just have metal in my skin. I mean, I know I have metal in my skin, but my immune system's probably just fr trying to fight it constantly. And so um, because of that, it feels like my skin's on fire all the time. This is not really a symptom that I will take any medication for because it's constant. Um, the burning in my brain, I will absolutely sometimes have to take Tylenol, Tylenol for. Otherwise, I will just lay there and be in so much pain. Worsened memory. So I used to like actually kind of remember stuff like as a calendar in my head, like I could tell you every month of my life what I did. After gadolinium that stopped, my dreams also stopped. Sometimes I have nightmares, but for the most part when I go to sleep, it feels like I am dead. And then I wake up again and I'm like, oh my God, I forgot I was even alive. And it's not because I was asleep and I forgot I was alive. I literally feel brain dead. And then I wake up. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm alive again. And I'm living this nightmare. When I first was poisoned, I said to my mom, like we got in the car and I was like, mom, can you take me to dad's house? And she was like, sure, after we go to the hardware store. So my brother and my mom get out of the car and go into the hardware store. And then they come back out and they're like, okay, do you want us to take you to dad's? And I was like, no. I was like, why would I want to go to his house right now? I, that is the last thing that I want to do. And I said, Peter, did I say to mom that I wanted to go to dad's? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, when? He was like, like five minutes ago. So yeah, it messes with your freaking memory. And there's a video here of my friend Debbie. She had like gadolinium induced dementia where you cannot remember things. So it absolutely messes with your memory like crazy. Next one is numbness in my limbs and feet and arms. It's, I can sit anywhere and 
my limbs start to go numb. Laying down and sleeping it happens. I can just walk around. It's in my feet a lot, which is super bothersome because you need your feet to walk. I'll just be walking around on like numb and tingling feet like all the time. That's like annoyingly the symptom that I went to the hospital because I had like tingling in my hands and feet and it was really bothering me. So the fact that I ended up getting a scan that has made the numbness and tingling permanent is really upsetting because not only do I have numbness and tingling now, I have every other thing that I've mentioned in this video and I just think that's messed up. Next one is severe depression. I have quite a few friends who have gone to the psych ward after getting gadolinium, partially just because they don't want to be alive anymore, which is super, super, super understandable. Um, this is not really a case of depression, like in the sense that normal depression is or that mental illness is. This is a case of being poisoned with a very toxic substance that then causes people to, one, like lose all joy that they felt in their life. That is commonly reported among people. Two, you just, the best way I can describe it is like that there's this dark cloud around you. I mean, it literally like, I even felt like my vision was kind of darker after, like everything was horrible. And I would cry every single day. I called my parents every single day. I would either be with them or I would be with my boyfriend. He lives in a different city because he had to move on with his life after I got poisoned. He couldn't just wait around for me. And I called my parents every single day telling them that I wanted to die pretty much because I just felt like I was on fire all the time. It felt like all my bro bones are glass and it just literally hurt so much. And it's not even like you're sad from it, it's like it messes with your brain. Like people have gone crazy after just getting one dose of gadolinium. And it's, those people have no history of mental illness. Those people, there is nothing wrong with them fundamentally. They got poisoned and they got a heavy toxic metal injected into their brain. Pretty freaking twisted if you ask me. Anyway. So next thing is suicidal ideation. I guess there are like two different ways I would categorize this. There's the suicide idea, like when you first get gadolinium, in some people, your brain just says, kill yourself, kill yourself, kill yourself, kill yourself, kill yourself, like nonstop, it says that. Um, the other version is you just think, oh my God, I made such an irreversible and horrible decision to get this scan. Like you go online and you realize that you're gonna be stuck with this for the rest of your life. So then you're kind of like, what? what's the point of going on? If I'm going to be in this much pain, what's the point? And then the third one is after those things kind of settle in and you, like your suicidal ideation from number one gets a little bit better because over time it does get better. Mine's probably like 70 to 80% better. Like it's not the only thing I'm thinking about. Two, I already forget what I said for two. Anyway, so for the third option, it's basically like once that stuff is settled, and you are in pain every day now and you're just realizing that this is never gonna go away and you are brain damaged and your body hurts and you're just kind of thinking like, what is the point? Like, I don't wanna do this. The next one is buzzing in the nerves. So like, basically how I can describe it is if you have a guitar that has strings on it and you pluck the string and it vibrates like for a while that's what your nerves will feel like. So you'll have like, just like, it feels like you have a string in your body and it's going mm -hmm. The next symptom is the feeling that rods are stabbing into you. So very shortly after getting poisoned, I would try to walk around and every time I tried to walk or do anything, it literally felt like there were metal rods, like just being jabbed through my legs. Also, I've had that feeling through my head before. Usually you can kind of pinpoint, there's like a spot where it feels like it's but so I would walk, it just hurt so badly. It felt like people were like prodding me with something. Body nervous system flashes, that's what I called them. I would get these flashes in my body where it would be like, you know when you blush and you have like redness coming to your face, it feels like that over your entire body. So it feels like your body is like flashing. It just kind of pulses, it's disturbing. The next feeling is a really weird one. I haven't had it in a while, but it's basically like this pulling feeling in your organs. So for me, it would feel like someone would like tie part of my organ to a string and like pull on it. Like, I don't know what that is at all. The next symptom is hardening of the organs. I kind of touched on this before, but that is like a super, super, super common 
um, trait with gadolinium. It's also known as, I think, fibrosis is when your organs are hardening. And that is the disease that they say people who get gadolinium will get only if you have bad kidneys. Not true at all. You can get it without having bad kidneys. I mean, you might not get NSF, but you can get fibrosis because I've already talked to some people who had normal kidneys and are fibrosing from it everywhere. Anyway, those are pretty much all of my symptoms that I have written down. I'm sure there are more like, oh, I get styes and like my eyes get super puffy. It's pretty much hell if I could, hell in a handbasket if I could describe it. So if you are going into the doctor's office and you're getting an MRI and they're giving you gadolinium because you get headaches, consider the fact that you may walk out with headaches and 10,000 other symptoms. That is something that I did not know. I did not know, oh, if I go on this MRI, not only are they gonna give me the symptoms that I am acutely experiencing permanently, but I'm gonna have an entire list of other symptoms. That's just giving an idea of what it's like to have gadolinium poisoning. So when you see people complain about it and you're like, oh, you look fine. This is the stuff that they are going through every single day. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you or a loved one have been harmed by gadolinium, first, I'm so sorry. But second of all, email mrigadoliniumdisease at gmail.com. Your email will go to Dr. Regina Sutton, who is currently looking for people's information so that she can get us approved with an actual medical diagnosis. Also, you can report your case to the FDA. We need the power and numbers to show that this is happening to people everywhere. And lastly, you can join our Facebook groups or social media. If you have not been harmed by GAD, consider yourself lucky and run the other way. I'm just kidding. We actually need your help. So there's a drug that can potentially chelate gadolinium, but believe it or not, it's not publicly available. Weird how that works, isn't it? The antidote is not available. Another thing is we really want to see gadolinium deposition disease on consent forms. As of right now, people are not told that there is an issue with taking gadolinium unless they have kidney disease. That is just outright wrong. So call up your local congressperson and tell them, hey look, I've noticed some of my friends have been getting poisoned and mention these two things to them. We need funding for HOPO, the drug that can chelate gadolinium, and we need informed consent because it's not really enough to just put it in small print on a medication guide that no patient receives. Who's going to be able to see it if you're not giving them the medication guides? We need GDD put on consent forms. When people sign for MRIs, tell them what is possible. Thank you for watching and come back again.